Hey guys, Eric Dragon Highlander here back again with another EDH deck tech and today I want to talk about a super exciting mono blue commander that is running zero counter spells. Uh, I love this deck and very excited about it. So Herkel Master Wizard. Herkel is one of the oldest characters in magic lore. Uh, she, her name has been showing up on magic cards since the early 90s back when I started playing. Um, and we finally have an actual legendary creature named Herkel that we can play in the command zone. So that's very exciting to me. But also, Herbal has a really unique ability in that she wants you to be casting non-creature spells, and then she's digging for more non-creature spells that share a type with it. Um, but what's I think the reason that she's not seeing a ton of play is because uh, you're telegraphing that very plainly to your opponents what you're digging for, um, and also that it's happening on end step, so they get a whole turn cycle to go around the table and deal with you before you even get to cast the thing that you dug for and then show them. So the way that I want to get around this and the way that I want to kind of win the game with this deck is by taking an infinite number of turns and not letting our opponents beat us up. Uh, so how we're going to take infinite turns in this deck is by casting an extra turn spell, uh, exiling our entire library, and then putting our extra turn spell back into the empty library and making it the only card that we draw every turn. Then, from there, because we're casting this non-creature spell every turn, Herkel is going to dig us further for more non-creature spells, and then that's just going to chain into this kind of loop where every turn we're getting more and more value, more and more spells, more and more mana, playing more lands, uh, and just kind of like go to town until we eventually win the game. Um, so the way that we are exiling or milling our entire library is going to be uh, five pieces in this deck. So we've got Thought Lash and Phyrexian Devourer, both of which let us go uh, one for one, just exile single cards from the top of our library at instant speed. Um, then we've got Leveler, which just exiles our entire library when it hits. Uh, then we've got Mirror of Fate, which exiles our entire library um, and also gets to fetch us back up to seven cards from exile. Uh, so what's cool about that is if we have a necessary piece in our deck that has been exiled by one of our opponents, we can actually get it back into an empty library. And then, you know, with the mirror of fate, it not only gets us back the thing that's been exiled, but it also empties our library. So it does two things for us. Uh, and then there's the tunnel vision, which is going to mill our entire library. Uh, and the way that that works is we name a card and then dig until we hit it. But because Herkel in our command zone is looking at the top five cards, putting some into our hand and then putting the rest on the bottom, we know what our bottom few cards are. So with tunnel vision, we can just name one of those couple cards that are on the bottom, dig until we hit that. And then we have just a couple cards left on the bottom and we know what they are. So then from there, once we have an empty library, what we want to do is uh, cast an extra turn spell and then put that back into our empty library. So the way that we're doing the uh, the, the recovery of the piece is uh, going to be Rato Lantern, Rato Sentinel, Canal Dredger, and Junk Troller. Those are going to be our four pieces that um, can dig from the graveyard back to the, the empty library. Um, and all of those cards put it on the bottom. So the way that that works is we can put um, like an extra turn spell on the bottom of an empty library. So it's actually the top card. And then we can also put other stuff underneath it. So we know what the order of our deck is and we can stack it so that Herkel's ability triggers in such a way that we're always digging for what we want to cast and then getting the next in the chain, the next in the chain. Um, then what we're doing from there is we're going to uh, so cast the, the extra turn spells that we want. Um, so that's going to be Temporal Manipulation, Time Warp, Capture of Jing Zhu. Uh, those are going to be the ones that we need those pieces to dig them back from the graveyard to the empty library. Um, and then Nexus of Fate and Beacon of Tomorrows are going to be the pieces that um, just shuffle themselves back in on their own. Um, so we don't actually need those other pieces to achieve the combo. We just have to have an empty library and then Nexus of Fate, Beacon of Tomorrows, just go infinite on their own. So once we are looping all of these extra turns, uh, we are going to need to close out the game. Uh, and that's going to be with pieces that kind of churn out these tokens over time. Uh, and then we'll get enough tokens to go wide and kill all of our opponents. Now, what these pieces also do before we get to that point 
um, is they just sit there and churn out this kind of inevitable value and keep us alive, protect our life total. They serve as chump blockers until we can get to that point where we're taking over the game with infinite turns and then they're churning out enough tokens to just kind of overrun the board and take over the game. Uh, and so we're talking about stuff like Ominous Seas, uh, Mirrodin Besieged that pumps out mirror tokens, uh, Thopter Spy Network, uh, Shark Typhoon. These are pieces that just kind of sit there and get us inevitability, churn out tokens. Uh, and then we've also got Artificer Class, which is an incredible card in this deck because it helps to reduce the cost of artifacts. It also digs through our library for artifacts, and it also creates copies of artifacts on um, each of our end steps. So it just keeps churning out this inevitability and it works as two card types basically, right? For the Hercule, because it's an enchantment that finds us artifacts. Uh, and we're also gonna be running Extravagant Replication, which is a super fun card and I really love that we get to play it in this deck. Uh, just a six drop enchantment that makes a copy of something every turn. So we can duplicate Shark Typhoons, we can duplicate Thopter Spy Networks, we can duplicate, um, you know, any number of really cool, like Mana Rocks or card draw pieces or value engines, just any, anything. We can copy, uh, like, like any kind of prison pieces, things like that. No, we haven't got to the prison pieces, but we'll get there. Uh, or, or removal pieces, etc. So Extravagant Replication is very, very powerful in this deck, and I really like it here. Uh, so we also need to dig for all of these pieces. Uh, so our card draw package and our top deck manipulation package is coming up next. Uh, so to control the top of the deck, because obviously Hercule's ability wants to dig us down five cards, um, and scrying to the bottom is also very powerful with stuff like tunnel vision. Um, we want to have a pretty strong package of things that are going to kind of dirtle around with the top of the deck. So we're running in the mana base stuff like Castle Vantress and Rivendell, which are just lands that tap for blue mana and also scry us cards. Uh, we're running Sensei's Divining Top and Scroll Rack, which just kind of let us dirtle around with hand, top of the library, etc. Um, and we're also running Crystal Ball, that's just an artifact that's going to sit there and scry us two cards every turn. Uh, and then we're also going to run uh, Soothsaying, which is a really fun one-drop enchantment that lets us just look at the top, uh, however many cards, X cards, and then rearrange them so we can put, you know... If we pay X is six, you know, we can, uh, we can put five cards specifically set up just for Hercule and then have that sixth card be the card that we're going to draw on our next turn. Uh, we can use that ability with Susang to set up the bottom of the library, the top of the library, the draw for our next turn. It's a really, really powerful piece. Very cool. And it also has that shuffle ability on it, which I think is just chef's kiss. It doesn't need that to be very strong in this deck, but it doesn't hurt to have it. Um, now, we're also running a pretty thick card draw package uh, because we definitely want to be drawing lots of cards to get there. Uh, so we're running uh, Ancestral Vision, which I just love suspend in this deck because what you can do is set it up on an earlier turn, then cast the Hercule, then with Hercule on the battlefield, when the Ancestral Vision resolves, you're getting a free spell then being able to cast other spells out of your hand. So that's letting you kind of dig with Hercule for multiple things. Um, and knowing that a suspended spell is coming up uh, lets you kind of sequence your turns so that you're getting the multiple types, right? So that you're getting sorcery, enchantment, and artifact all on the same turn. Um, and it, it lets you kind of choose the order in which you want to do things so that you get the greatest value or potential value off of Hercule's ability. So Suspend is really, really cool in this deck, and I like Ancestral Vision a lot. Um, it also, just because the Suspend is four, you can cast, you can suspend it on turn one, cast Hercule turn three, Ancestral Vision will go off on your fourth turn, and then that's your immediate value right there, which I love. Uh, we're also going to be running Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. They're enchantments, they draw us cards, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we're running Endless Atlas and Tamiyo's Logbook, both of which are artifacts that are going to draw us cards. Endless Atlas is great because we're a monocolor deck. Tamiyo's Logbook is perfect because this deck has like 35 or something artifacts in it. It's a lot of artifacts. Um, we're also going to run Windfall, which is just a great little sorcery that lets us swap out all the cards in our hand. Helps a lot too when we know what's on the top of our deck with all of that scry package that we were just talking about earlier. Um, and we've also got stuff like Psychic Possession, 
Um, so it just replaces your one card draw every turn with whoever your opponent is that draws the most cards, you get to draw for every time they draw. Psychic Possession is a brilliant card in this deck. Um, and also the Bath Song is just a really strong value piece that just sits there and, you know, for four mana and one card, you draw four, discard two, and then add mana and shuffle stuff back in. Like, it's it's really, really cool, very strong card. Um, and then we're running Lorien Revealed and Seagate Revealed restoration as well. Uh, both of those kind of slot as lands for me, because Seagate Restoration, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's either three life or it's a tapped land, or it's a card draw spell. Uh, and Lorien Revealed basically can count as a tapped land. You just spend one, go island cycling, put the island into play untapped. Um, or, you know, you can use it as a five mana drop three if you want. And they're also sorceries. So that works brilliantly with our game plan as well as kind of also being lands in the mana base as far as I'm concerned. Um, speaking of lands and ramp, we're going to need to do a whole bunch of ramping because as you can tell, a lot of these cards are pretty expensive. You know, Nexus of Fate is seven mana. Beacons of Tomorrow is eight mana. Um, you know, all this stuff is just big, dumb, expensive things. Uh, you know, like Tunnel Vision is six. Phyrexian Devourer is six. Um, we we want to be spending a lot of mana. And we also want to be multiple spelling every turn. So we get our maximum value off of Hercule. So the ramp package in this mono blue deck is pretty intense. Uh, so we're running stuff like Mox Opal. As I said, obviously ton of artifacts in this deck. Mox Opal definitely belongs. Uh, we're also running more suspend stuff. So like Mox Tantalite and uh, Soul Talisman. Those are going to be, again, with the same kind of value that the Ancestral Vision is giving us, where like you can kind of sequence your turns knowing that you're going to have an artifact spell so you can queue up an enchantment or a sorcery to cast on the same turn so you get that multiple spell type value off of Hercule. Uh, we're running Myriad Landscape as a land that lets us just go fetch two basics. Uh, Monocolor deck, Myriad Landscape gets two of the same type. Just works. Uh, we're also running Soul Ring. Obviously, lots of colorless uh, pips in our, or generic pips rather, in our um, uh, deck, you know, in our spell casting costs. Uh, we're running Arcane Signet and Sky Diamond for our blue mana rocks. We're running uh, Mind Stone and Thought Vessel for our colorless mana rocks. Uh, and As Foretold is going to be a super fun piece in this list as well. So As Foretold is going to kind of work the same way the Suspend things work, where like we can queue up knowing that we have, you know, a free spell on two or a free spell on three coming up. So we can line up the, the card types that we're trying to cast so that, um, you know, we can have an enchantment on two with an As Foretold on three and then cast that artifact with the As Foretold, whatever, and then get the extra value off of the Hercule that way. Um, also, we're doing a uh, Thran Dynamo and Gilded Lotus just for that big, big mana rock energy. Uh, I love these cards in big mana decks. Uh, just fun, awesome mana rocks that work really, really nicely. And it always feels good when you get them. Now, we also need to talk a little bit about protection. Uh, we need to protect both our life total and the uh, creatures in our deck that are trying to repeat those uh, extra turn spells. So the Junk Troller, the Canal Dredger, and the Rado Sentinel, those are pretty vulnerable being creatures, so we do need to protect those and keep them alive. Um, so that's going to be with stuff like Lightning Greaves and Swiftfoot Boots that give them haste as well for their tap abilities, uh, and Nurok Stealth Suit, which gives Shroud and attaches at instant speed, uh, and Monastery Siege, which is going to give spells our opponents uh, cast that target uh, a permanent we control, uh, attacks of two generic mana, which is great, just kind of slows our opponents down from targeted removal. Uh, we're also running Elixir of Immortality, just to reshuffle anything that gets removed back into our empty library and gain five life. We can loop that, which is fantastic. Uh, we're also running some pillow fort pieces, so that's going to be stuff like Meek Stone uh, to shut down big attackers, Crawl Space to shut down a whole bunch of attackers. We're running uh, Propaganda and Collective Restraint as well as pillow fort pieces just to tax our opponent attacking us. Um, and Collective Restraint might look a little bit weird here as a, uh, a domain card in a one-color deck. In a mono-colored list, having domain seems odd, but... 
What I'm running in the mana base here is going to be a uh, Yavi Maya Cradle of Growth, as well as an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth. Uh, those are super fun includes, I think, because they effectively work as just colorless lands in this monocolor deck, but they add on to that collective restraint to make the domain much, much stronger. Um, and we are also running um, the Expedition map as a one of in this list uh, that is going to be something that we can use to go and fetch those to make the collective restraint better. Uh, and what's cool about the collective restraint as well is even if we are just on the one uh, land type with the island, uh, we can still duplicate the collective restraint with something like an extravagant replication, just every turn making copies of it. Um, so it definitely does have a lot of lines in this deck that it can be really powerful with. Um, we're also running Mation the Mind Cage, which is just a really good way to um, keep ourselves alive, keep our opponents off of killing us, um, and then we can just play out all the cards in our hand when we have time to attack, uh, and we have all the 1-1s the one and 2-2s two on the board, we can just play out all the cards in our hand, dump our hand, and then get in there with uh, the Mation um, no longer giving our creatures minus X minus so when it's our turn to attack, which is great. Uh, now, we are also running some really fun stuff in the mana base. Uh, so there's going to be like Academy Ruins and Buried Ruin that are going to let us um, kind of bring stuff back out of the graveyard. We're running Boseju Who Shelters All to stop our extra turn spells from being countered. Uh, Darksteel Citadel and Seed of the Synod will allow us to... Um, get those as be they do have an artifact type so we can get those off of the Hercule ability uh we've also got inventor's fair that lets us search for an artifact we've got mystic sanctuary that lets us recur uh sorcery from the graveyard on top of the library uh reliquary tower that is a uh way to stop us from having a maximum hand size we've got shell dock isle that's gonna let us uh play free spells from under it uh as long as a library normally ours has uh fewer than however many cards it is uh we're running war room as a little bit of extra draw in the mana base and we're also running urza's saga which counts as an enchantment so again like those artifact lands we can find it off of the hercule ability and also it lets Let's us tutor up a one drop artifact so that's going to be stuff like soul ring if we need it um, or even the expedition map so we can go and dig up that yavi maya cradle or the expedition map which is going to let us go and get a reliquary tower or a boseju or an academy ruins or whatever it is that we need right uh castle vantress if we need something for the scry etc etc right so um i think that all of that stuff is really really powerful in the mana base too just as a, a little bit of bonus and it's cool too because in a monocolor deck you have all of this wiggle room with these colorless lands that otherwise you wouldn't really be able to play in a deck that needs tons of color fixing uh, but especially too because we have so many artifacts and so many generic and colorless pips uh, on all of the spells that we're casting like we can go pretty hard on colorless lands um, and like Urborg, Tomb of Yagmoth, and Yavi Maya Cradle of Growth in this deck specifically are just basically colorless lands for us but that also just happened to make one of our pillow fort pieces much, much better. Um, so I really like that as uh, just kind of some wiggle room in the mana base, really cool lands that we can play. Um, now, another way to kind of protect our life total is we want to use removal. We want to be uh, using both targeted removal and board wipes. Um, so that's going to be stuff like Ottawara Soaring City, once again, in the mana base, really no cost to us to run it, uh, but it is also a removal piece. Uh, we're running stuff like Witness Protection, Kazmina's Transmutation, Stasis Field. Those are going to just deal with creatures. Uh, Imprisoned in the Moon is going to deal with a creature or a land or a planeswalker. Uh, we're running Raven Form, which deals with an artifact or a creature. And then Tamiyo's Completion, which deals with an artifact or a creature or a planeswalker. Um, all of these are going to basically just kind of as removal be like this is not what it was it is now a generic or vanilla one one or a zero one or a zero two or whatever it is that they turn it into right
And for board wipes, we have just a couple here. Uh, one that I'm kind of counting as an honorary board wipe is going to be Dress Down. Uh, that's not actually a board wipe, but what it is is a flash enchantment that ETBs draws as a card and then takes away all abilities on all creatures for the turn. Uh, so that basically shuts off if our opponents are trying to win the game um, or any kind of like crazy abilities, shenanigans they're trying to go off with. Um, it's kind of an honorary board wipe to my mind, just for one turn. Uh, we're also running Consuming Tide, Crush of Tentacles, and Flood of Tears, all of which are going to hit all non-land permanents uh, and are going to give us some kind of value. Uh, so the Consuming Tide is going to give us card draw off of it. Crush of Tentacles is going to give us a, an 8-8 attacker off of that. Um, and the Flood of Tears is going to let us put a permanent from our hand onto the battlefield. Um, yeah, anyway, so that is the deck, uh, which I think is just super fun, very exciting. I love the idea of playing a Mono Blue Commander with no counter spells, very, very few creatures, restricted on what kind of card types you can use, um, and just all these wacky utility lands doing stuff with, like, exiling your library, getting to use Junk Troller and Canal Dredger, like, effectively towards a win. Um, really, really exciting to be able to do that. And also just really cool, big, dumb spells. Like, getting to cast things like Seagate Restoration, uh, Psychic Possession, you know, Beacon of Tomorrow's, Shark Typhoon, Extravagant Replication, Mation the Mind Cage. Like, just, this is the timmiest blue deck uh, I think I have ever built. It's just so many big, dumb spells that do really fun things. But I think also the way that they interact together and the way that, that they work with Herkel and this kind of deck design is actually really effective and very strong. And I'm excited to pilot it and win some games with it. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much, as always, for being here. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. I love talking to you guys. I love interacting with you. I love hearing about what you think about the decks and, and what I can do better for these videos and for these deck builds. Um, yeah, as always, thank you guys so much. Uh, please let me know what you think down below. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one, guys. Be safe.